Welcome back, Pointer fans, to our second to last Wisdom Wednesday. Man, it feels like we just are getting started in some ways. We started this when we went uh, to remote work with COVID-19, and yeah, we, we said we were going to do this for 13 weeks, and, and we're to week 12. So um, we've made it. We're almost through this portion of it, and we have been blessed to have awesome guests from Marty Lopez, Frank O'Brien, uh, Chris Brooks, you name it. We've had awesome, awesome conversations. But, you know, for me, this is one of the ones I've really been looking forward to. We've got Coach Rick Witt with us. And before I get into his, uh, you know, I could spend all 45 minutes talking about all of his accomplishments, and I'm going to spend some time to do that. You know, I think it's important to share that Coach Witt, from the first day I started, July 11th, you know, four years ago, Coach Witt has been one of the guys who's in my, who has been first in the office and in our corner and helping me miss landmines and, and, and giving me advice. And, you know, he is just somebody, and I'm, I'm just one of hundreds of pointers that Coach Witt has had lifelong impacting impact on, and, and we're lucky to have Coach with us. You know, Coach was our coach from 19, 1977 to, nine, uh, to 2014. As our head coach, during that time, he produced 25 NCAA individual national champions, 245 All-Americans in cross-country, outdoor, and indoor track, six times WIC Coach of the Year, but that's misleading because we used to be the WSUC. He won that Coach of the Year eight times, so he's 14-time Coach of the Year in the league, nine-time track and field uh, national uh, – I'm sorry, nine-time NCAA track and field uh, – Association Regional Coach of the Year, and in 1996 was the National Coach of the Year. Um, his teams had unprecedented success, top four finishes 11 times, uh, had 22 top 10, fin uh, top 10 finishes, has coached uh, an Olympic Trials participant, has coached a National uh, Athlete of the Year. You know, it goes on and on and on. And, and in 2018, UWSP did right to the Hall of Fame uh, by inducting our coach, Coach Rick Witt, into the UWSP Hall of Fame. And most of you know this, but since 2014, Coach has stayed on. He continues to coach with us and our distance runners and our cross country. And, you know, if, if you're going to say, who is UW Stevens Point Athletics, Coach Rick Witt is on top of that moment. Coach Witt, how are you doing? I love what I'm doing. <laughs> I, my passion is – is coaching, working with young athletes. Uh, I love UWSP. Everybody laughs and says that, you know, three quarters of my wardrobe is purple and gold. And <laughs> that's probably the truth. Uh, it's Stevens Point gave me a great opportunity, you know, 45 years ago. And I have, have never, you know, doubted one day that I made the right decision when I came to UWSP. They gave me an opportunity to do what I wanted to do. I worked with some great administrators that said, you know, just do things right. Tell me what I can do to help you. And let's see how far we can go with this thing. And I mean, what more can you ask for is to have that type of a, of a situation. It, it's ironic as we talk about COVID and everything right now. And I've talked with some of the kids that have come out and I said, you know, it's almost like we're going to step back in time a little bit. And, you know, some of the things and some of the, the decisions that we're going to have to make and some of the things that we're going to have to do because of finances and everything else is going to be back to the, to the seventies and eighties when we were doing things on a shoestring budget and uh, you know, thinking that that seven or $8 a day for uh, food was uh, we were doing great. You know, I used to pack all the lunches out of the bow and get them to take us, you know, give us food from the bow to go on a road trip. So uh, you know, thinking about those things and, and stuff, it, as I said to you before we started talking, it, I, this, is, this is bad, but you know what? It's a challenge. And I think if you're a coach, that's one of the things you like is to try to have some kind of a challenge to meet and, and to do something different. Well, you know, Coach, you, you hit on something there. Uh, but, but before I get going, not only is three quarters of your wardrobe purple and gold, but if you really know, Coach, hundred percent of his shoes are purple and gold. So he, <laughs> That's he true too. There. Yeah. Um, you know, coach, uh, for, for many of us uh, who are, you know, our entire life, coach, you have been part of Point Athletics. Um, 
and you know, certainly our current student athletes, you, you predate them significantly. Um, but you know, you came here in 1977 and, and Stevens Point has a rich tradition today and it had a rich tradition, uh, but certainly the success in the last 45 years has been pretty amazing. And um, uh, you know, part of who we are today has happened in the last 45 years, but go back, go back to the early days, to the late seventies when you arrived here at UW Stevens Point and were named our coach. What, what, were, what was it like to be a pointer, you know, in the late seventies, early eighties? You know, it, it really was a family because when, when we got here, Pointer Athletics was just starting to, to make a name for itself. Uh, you know, there had been some success in the past, but it had been kind of a, and I mean, all of our sports were just kind of in the process of trying to, to find out who we were and, and what we were going to try to accomplish and those types of things. And when I first started, I mean, you know, Dick Bennett had just come in and Dick and I used to run together at noontime. I mean, we talk about, you know, a family affair. It really was, you know, uh, Dick Bennett and Steve Swan. And then Marty Loy came in and was a wrestling coach. And Marty and I were uh, office mates. We actually shared an office. Track and, and wrestling were in, in the thing together. And so, I mean, there was just a ton of people that, have gone on to become, you know, parts of the Hall of Fame and, and just leaders in, in Pointer UWSP. And I was lucky enough to be in here at the same time that all of them were. And when we talk about Pointers being a family, we really were a family then. I mean, we got together after basketball games. We got together after football games. You know, it was – it was nuts. I mean, people really did support one another and our kids all played together and, you know, a basketball game, there was a game after the game because the kids were all on the floor running around, you know, while we were talking with, you know, everybody and that type of thing. And so it was, you know, it was fun. I mean, and we didn't think anything was not good. I mean, my wife said, you remember when you first came here, I used to drive to Rapids and pick up the bus and she would take me over there with the kids. I would bring the bus back to point, park it on my driveway. Now this was a pseudo coach bus. Okay. <laughs> it was sort of like one of those church buses that you see. Okay. Yeah. I would drive it to the meet. We would go get food. We'd have a meet. I would turn around and drive home park it on my driveway on Saturday night. Sunday, my wife would get up. I would drive it back to Rapids, drop it off. She would bring me back. So when I say we literally have all been in this together, it's the truth because Brett used to ride on the school bus. I told Don Amiot, who was the AD, I said, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to see my family. Uh, they're going on the bus. And if, if that's not cool, then maybe this isn't the right place for me. He said, hell yes, take them anytime you want to, take them. I mean, my boys grew up with the team, you know, and so did Joan. And so that's, when we talk about pointer athletics, that's what I remember was those, you know, crazy times like this when we, we had nothing to, to work on, you know, and I, I'll tell you, the first time that we got a driver for the bus and I didn't have to drive, I thought I'd won the lottery, honestly. <laughs> it, it, no, it, it was great. I mean, we all were in, crammed in, like I said, you know, two of us in an office and kids were in and out of there all the time. And Marty was talking to somebody about wrestling and I was talking to somebody about track and field. And it was, I mean, it was nuts. It really was. You know, you know, coach, you, 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 you led me right into our next question and, and, um, you know, I've been here four years and every Hall of Fame, it, it feels like, um, you know, you've got at least an athlete, if not a team that's going in. And, you know, I mean, the, as you said, the, the success is littered uh, through you. You know, you've had a lot of great moments um, and, and obviously great accomplishments. And uh, But, you know, what are some of the more memorable moments? And I know we could spend, you know, a whole series of, in the UWSP track and field cross country memorable moments, but what are some of the, what are some of the moments that stood out for you in, in the last several years? 
the 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 first time that that we won any kind of uh, a conference championship, uh, lacrosse had been a dominant force, and they still are forever. And the fir- when we first came here, uh, people thought nobody could beat lacrosse. Mm-hmm. And the first time that we beat lacrosse, I'd been here. I think it was 1982 was the first time that we beat them. So it had been, you know, five years, six years that I had been here. And to finally get to the point where we knew that if we did things right and we got good kids and they bought into what we were selling, that we did have an opportunity to, you know, to win. I think that was the first time, you know, the first one is always the greatest, you know, to be able Mm -hmm. to do that. And so that's a highlight. And then, Probably the second thing that that comes to mind is back in the old days, if you won at Division Three, you had an opportunity to move forward to Division One. Oh. And in 1986, uh, Arnie Schrader was here, and Arnie Schrader was a member of the Hall of Fame, and he's a member of the NCAA Division Three Hall of Fame and one of the best runners that's ever come out of Division Three. And he, he was only at Stevens Point because he had an appendix uh, burst when he was a senior, or he probably would have run well enough that somebody would have given him some money. But uh, we got him here. He basically lived at home, didn't even live on campus, drove here every day. But to make a long story short, he, he became the best runner in Division III, uh, without a doubt. Uh, still, I think he's still number four on the all-time list of times for a Division III athlete. His senior year, he was undefeated uh, the entire year. Uh, he beat everybody from Wisconsin and Michigan and Michigan State. We ran at Notre Dame. He won the Notre Dame Invitational. Uh, he uh, ran one of the fastest times that's ever been recorded in Division Three at our regionals. Went to uh, Buffalo, New York, and the, the course conditions were terrible. It was seven or eight inches of snow. Uh, he ran over three minutes slower than he had run the week before at the regionals, but won. We got on an airplane after the meet on Saturday. He and I did, because I, I knew he was going to win. And I talked to our AD, and he said, get an extra ticket. So we got a ticket. We flew from Buffalo, New York, to Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> we got in there at 4 a.m. in the morning. Slept until about 9. He and I went to the, got it, went to the course walked the course it was a desert Mm. and went to the banquet went to the cookout went to the place the the course the next morning and all the teams are there the d1 teams and they're all walking around in their nike gear and everything and arnie had an old flannel shirt that was his favorite shirt that he wore and of course it was hot so he took off his stevens point top and put on this flannel shirt he says do you care if i wear this I'm like, heck no i don't care you won this you wear what you want to do mm-hmm. so here he is warming up on you know the course with this shirt on we uh the race goes and he well on the way back out there he said to me i said to him being a really smart coach i said arnie here's the plan i says i think you just get out in the top 25 see if you can be an all-american in this thing and whatever happens happens and he goes no and i'm like what i'm spending two grand to fly you and, and you say no he goes no i think i'll just try to win and i go oh okay that's good too we'll do that well make a long story short he tried to win and as the race progresses they're talking about all these guys that should be up front and who isn't who the hell is that guy, you know, <laughs> and I'm pretty quiet. And then about four miles in this six mile race. And you've got to realize he's never raced six miles before. Cause we only race five at division three. Mm-hmm. After a while I'm going, 
that's my guy. That's my guy that's up front with uh, about 600 meters to, to go. He takes the lead. And I'm going, son of a buck, he is going to win this damn thing. Well, he ran out of gas. I mean, literally, with about 200 meters to go, he basically just barked and was just doing the survival shuffle coming on. The heat and everything got to him. But he ended up getting 11. <laughs> well, after that whole thing, I can't tell you who – every coach in the country was coming up to me saying, who is this guy? You know, what the heck? You know, where did this guy come from? You know, so that was definitely a highlight, you know, because, I mean, we beat everybody. The Badgers didn't recruit him. He beat everybody. The Badgers recruited. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And then the other highlight was probably having the opportunity to coach my sons. I mean, that's – I think that's every coach's dream is to, to have that opportunity. Uh, if you were to ask Brett, I'll, he'll probably tell you it was a lot harder on him than it was on me, you know, because uh, he, for a long time, he never even told people what his last name was. He, they just called him Brett, you know, for a long time. So, you know, and it's it's not about the the winning. I mean, that's always fun. Don't get me wrong. That's what we strive for. But it was, you know, having that opportunity to have your sons have the same passion that you do. Mm -hmm. or something is something special and then you know to have your son you know come along and and his dream to be able to come back and coach at the school where he had you know phenomenal success also was is I mean there's nothing like it you know like you and I've said you know I, I sure as the heck don't coach for any money I do it just because I love working with the kids and have an opportunity to you know contribute in some small way you know, you led into my next question. You're such a great, you know, you, you, it's so fun to listen to these stories. And, you know, I, I think um, if you take a look and you're, you're even a casual fan of UWSP track and field and cross country, you know, your name and Brett's name and, and, and both, well, both your sons and come to mind. But one of the things that um, I've recognized in just the short four years I've been here is now, I mean, who was forever mom of the program is now probably grandma of the program because, you know, it's my, you know, it's, it, we got yeah. kids running around everywhere. Um, but, you know, UWSP track and field cross country is absolutely a family and it has been a family affair for a long time. Um, you know, you, you've, you've mentioned being with Brett and, and, and coaching and, and, you know, being around your family. Talk to us a little bit about how much Joan has meant to Pointer, track and field, and cross country. You know, that's an awesome question, Brad. And anybody, you, know, you were a coach, and, and you know what I'm saying, that you can't be a good coach and have a family unless your wife is invested 100%. Because – you're spending more time with somebody else's children than you are with your own children. Even if you try hard to, to be a good dad, you're, you're still gone, you know, that much of the time. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I, I realized early on, if, if I was going to do this, I, I had to do as much as possible to have my family involved in, in every way that I could. And uh, early on when we did not have an indoor track, uh, to host any home meets, uh, as I said, they traveled with me a great deal. Uh, as Breton and Chad got a little older and got into more sports of their own, they they were not able to, you know, Joan wasn't able to travel with us quite as much. But I've always said that, you know, if something happened to me, uh, she, she could coach the team. I have, I have no doubt about it. I mean, when our budgets were small and we didn't have any other full-time assistance, uh, if I had to take two buses, uh, who was going to bring the bus, you know? So Joan brought the bus. You know, I would take the early bus and she would come on and she'd take the next bus. She'd call roll. She would say, who's here? You know, where we're stopping to eat. So, I mean, she knew what was going on. And once we did get an indoor track, I mean, she pretty much ran everything. 
Uh, my son started out, they were the clerks when they were old enough to read names. They were the people that lined everybody up uh, and set everything up. So, I mean, we've tried to find every opportunity to keep them involved with, you know, whatever. Uh, we probably broke a zillion rules when we didn't know what rules were because kids were always coming out for dinner or whatever, you know what I mean? As times change, we know we can't do that. But in the old days, nobody knew, nobody cared. You know, you just, kids would come out and we'll, especially when Brett was on the team and everybody was here for Easter, what are we supposed to do? You know, we had them all gathered around the table and everything. And so she's been the backbone of, of track and field and has allowed me to do what I wanted to do for, you know, 51 years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's, uh, one thing I've learned pretty quickly in the four years when we have a home track meet and, and, you know, our fans would know that's an indoor meet. If I need to know what's going on, I don't go to, and find our head coach. I don't find any of our assistant coaches. I go straight to the table and I know Joan Witt will be there. And Joan knows exactly what's going on. And, and the other she, she the other certainly thing. does. And I, as I, you can ask Kelly, she knows where every penny that's ever been <laughs> taken in for pointer track and field goes to. She's got, Brett called me the other day and asked something that, that Megan or you had wanted. And, and I said, just a minute, I'll ask Joan. And <laughs> sure enough, she pulled out a piece of paper and there it was. You know, it's not on a computer, it's in a file folder dated every cent that we've ever had and I said thank God for her because that's not my high or strong point. <laughs> well and, and you know the other thing that's just is blowing my mind in, in terms of being uh, you know running such a high successful program um, you know one of the things I think I probably took from my dad is when you have talented people get out of their way and you know it was interesting when I came here I had never been an AD of a track program before and, uh, you know, that first winter, we're hosting an indoor track meet, and I'm panicking because I, I have no idea what we're supposed to do, who we get to officiate, how we – I don't have any idea. And, uh, you know, I, I happened to bump into your wife, you know, and I was talking to her about that, and she said, listen, coach, which is what the family refers to you as, and Brett, who is also our coach, They've got it. We've got everybody lined up already. It's all set. I'll call this person, this person, this person. I walked down there on Saturday and it looked like we knew what we were doing. I had no clue. So, I, <laughs> and I still don't know, but I know that I put you guys in charge. So, you know, you know, coach, talk about a little bit, you know, you were our head coach for a long, long time. And now you've had the opportunity to transition and, and really focus on your events and um, you know, Brett gets the opportunity to do some of the things coaches don't like to do, right? Budgets and travel and all the other, sure. you get to focus on coaching, but what's it been like to continue your coaching career with Brett now as our head coach and, and, and you as our, you know, our distance coach and, and basically our, you know, our, our, our all time coach. It's been a perfect transition. I mean, most people my age, go to find something else to do when they retire. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to go back and do what I love to do when I'm retired. Mm -hmm. And it's been, I mean, you know, I come in at 1230 or one o'clock or something like that and have time to meet with kids before practice. And then I, you know, do my practice and, and that type of thing. And so, it, it's been an ideal situation because, it, you know, we love pointer sports and the fact that, you know, I, I get to still hang around. I get to know who the kids are. I, you know, I know who the women's basketball players are that are playing and we get to go and watch them play. And the, the same thing with the guys. I mean, uh, somebody says, why don't you go to Florida or somewhere? You know, <laughs> well, you know what? This is where we are. This is what we do, you know. You know, we don't miss a darn thing unless there's somebody sick or whatever. I mean, we're pretty much at everything. That's what that's what we like. That's what our that's what our life is, really, to be honest. And so, it's been great. I mean, I I I've been able to do the things that are more fun and not the the mundane things, as as you said. You know, working with budgets and those types of things. And I've I've let Brett ask 
you know, what he wanted uh, me to do and, and those types of things. Although it's funny, Brad, you know, you, this was the first time that you kind of changed the whole process of, of budgeting and those types of things this year. And so I got a phone call and Brett asked if, uh, if he could come out and, and we sat here for about four hours the other day at the kitchen table uh, doing the budget type things because it was a little more similar to things that we had done, you know, in the past years when, when I was in charge and he was asking all kinds of things. And so in those situations, it's more like I tell people I'm still the assistant coach, but the dad card comes out every now and then where you uh, have uh, experiences that dad has that maybe son has not had the opportunity to learn yet. Yeah. Well, he, he, we are all lucky coach to, to be able to pull in that kind of knowledge and, and history and perspective. And, and uh, you know, that leads me right into the final question. <clears throat> when we started this series, um, this wasn't intended. I mean, it wasn't as if we woke up in December and said, hey, let, let's do this Wisdom Wednesday thing. Where this started was COVID hit and we're, man, the narrative is negative out there. And we have such a rich history with great stories. Let's tell it. And one of the things that um, as the, we kind of developed this Wisdom Wednesday thing was let's have the people who have kind of been there, done that, got the t-shirt, as Mr. Frank O'Brien often says, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Um, let's let them talk to our student athletes. You know, I, I talk to them, but um, I haven't been here for 50 years. And, and, and uh, you know, what advice do you have for our current and future pointers um, to, to, to make sure they leave their legacy as they're moving through. First off, enjoy it for the, the time goes by so fast. It's unbelievable. Uh, those four years or four and a half or five are, are gone in a heartbeat. And having been here all these years and when the kids come back, they, not one of them, ever mentions the championships or anything it's all about the the good times that we had involved in athletics uh yeah we're all trying our best to win because that's what we are we're competitive and and those types of things but those those memories they fade away people can't remember what year what happened or whatever but they sure as the heck remember the fun stuff that happened and the crazy things that had happened and 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 those types of things so i think you know that's the first thing that i would say to kids is is enjoy it uh the other thing i i try to tell our kids is that you know what you're at division three we ask you to do everything that the kids at Division One are doing. You work just as hard. You put in just as many hours. You do everything that they do. You just may not have quite as much talent. You know, we're all looking for that kid like Arnie Schrader that had the talent that could have been at Division One. But generally speaking, when you get D3 athletes, they, they are a little less talented, not quite as fast, not quite as big, those types of things. But it doesn't change the way we try to uh, approach those kids or what we ask them to do for us or what we try to do for them. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to try to get them to be absolutely the, the best athlete that they can be. And at the same time, you know, be a great student. Uh, we take a lot of pride in the fact that, you know, our kids are both good, you know, student athletes. And I was lucky enough to, to be a Division I athlete. And I can tell you, uh, I had numerous opportunities to, to move on to, you know, the Division I level. And I found that what Division Three was doing is what I wanted to do. Uh, I did not want to be in the win at all costs at atmosphere. I wanted a chance to be able to to enjoy the kids and, and that type of thing. And, and that's what I try to bring to them is, is that, hey, this is the best place in the world to be because we do things for the right reasons. 
Well, Coach, those are great, great words to our pointers. And, and I'm going to leave you with the final thought. But I, I, I want to say sincerely to you and to Joan and uh, the entire Witt family from the Duckworth family, you know, you said something about being great. You have to have a great wife. And, and you know, certainly that's the case. And, and mine and, and appreciates you as much because I, I go with her and say, hey, I learned this from Coach Witt today. And, um, you know, I want to say thank you for your willingness to have 50 years of pointer experience, but yet your willingness to be a teammate. You know, you would always stop and continue to, and I hope you always will for all of us, and, and certainly I'm gonna speak for myself, for me, to stop me and say, in the only way you can, in a nice way, hey, think about it this way, don't hit this landmine without telling me how to do that. And uh, you know, you've, you've been, you're a phenomenal leader for this department. You said something that really matters. Being present matters. and and I can tell you, I don't think there's many athletic events I've been to on our campus where that purple UWSP track jacket isn't facing the back wall, meaning the, <laughs> the wits are there in their, in their uh, seats and ready to roll, and we know we're ready to play. So, Coach, on behalf of myself and our entire athletic department, for you know, and, and I think I can speak for 50 years of it, thank you for all you continue to do. Can't wait for next year to have you back. And with that said, I'm going to leave you with the final thoughts, and I'll wrap it up, and that'll conclude our Wisdom Wednesday. So, Coach, any final thoughts for Pointer Nation? Look forward to the upcoming season, no matter what it's going to be. As you said, we don't know what it is, but our kids are excited. It, it doesn't matter what team it is. They're excited to get out there and try to compete again. Uh, if the opportunity affords itself that you can come and watch your our pointer teams play, uh, please do. You know, it's it's what we need. Our kids love that, and uh, we're just excited to to have an opportunity to meet all the the new kids. You know, even though COVID is here, the the freshmen that are coming in, they're just as excited no matter what, whether there is COVID or there's not COVID. It's like man this is all new and and we don't know so uh i'm just looking forward to to being able to share you know some of the 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 wisdom i guess if you say that you know people tell you as you get older you you've made so many mistakes that if you're halfway smart you learn from them so i i'm anxious to kind of share some of those things with the new people and try to just get them to have the the same passion for uwsp and uwsp track and cross country that i have well, Coach, thank you for today, and thank you as for all that you continue to do. Pointer Nation, we have one more Wisdom Wednesday left. We have one more guest, which we'll announce next week. Coach Witt, thank you for your time today. I know that the, the boss is waiting for you to get back up. You just got new carpet, so I know you got to get back upstairs. Thanks for all you do. Thanks to the Witt family, and Pointer Nation, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Brad.